it's mostly Casual Commander, where we try to keep our games fun without sacrificing our ability to win. I'm BK, and today's Commander game features Agnes, the Dragon's Lash, Falco Spera, Pact Weaver, Jetmir, Nexus of Rebels, and Rafine, Scheming Seer. Please subscribe if you haven't yet, and a huge shout out to Ross B for supporting us on Patreon, link in the description. Good old Busterkins won the die roll, so he kicks us off by playing a game trail as his land for turn and passing to J-Man, who plays Branch Loft Pathway, into a Soul Ring. Perfect turn one play in Commander, in our opinion. Kovacs plays Jetmir's Garden as his land for turn, and then he passes over to me. I play a Swamp as my land, and then I pass right back over to Busterkins, who plays a Reflecting Pool as his land on turn two, into a Talisman of Impulse, allowing him to tap for either a forest or a mountain or colorless. Prismatic Vista hits the battlefield on J-Man's turn. He sacks that, takes a life, and goes and fetches up an island. He then plays Safehold Elite, a persistent little elf. He follows that up by foretelling a card for two manas. He then passes the turn to Kovacs, who draws, and plays a forest as his land for turn, before passing the turn over to me. I drop an island as my land, and then I play a Talisman of Dominance, allowing me to ramp with a Demir color or colorless. Over to Busterkins on his turn 3, he plays Command Beacon, which will allow him to potentially bounce his commander, which he casts now. Agnes the Dragon's Lash, he then moves to combat at me. This triggers Agnes, gaining him a tapped treasure and getting me 3 points of commander damage. Over to J-Man's turn, he plays a Hollowed Fountain and pays the 2 life for it to enter the battlefield untapped, and he casts his commander, Falco Spara, Pact Weaver. This will enter the battlefield with a shield counter on him, and he could start peeking the scene on top of his library. Plains enters the battlefield on Kovacs' turn, he then casts Brazen Upstart, which will, if it dies will allow him to look at the top few cards of his library and get a creature to hand. Isolated Chapel hits my land for turn, followed by an Orzhov Signet allowing me to filter out ores off colors, which I do in order to cast an Archon of Emeria. This prevents all players from casting more than one spell each turn. Busterkins plays a Wooded Foothills tapped because of Archon of Emeria, and then he casts his one spell this turn, which will be Beast Whisperer. As punishment for my Archon, he moves to combat, swinging his commander at me again. I take another three, and he gets a tapped treasure. On a J-Man's turn, he moves right into combat at Busterkins, dealing him a few points of commander damage, and says go to Kovacs. He plays a forest as his land for turn, and casts Grand Warlord Rada, which could potentially give him a bunch of mana that he could use on his second main phase each turn. When he moves to combat, this triggers, he gets a red and a green, but sadly he doesn't have anything to use it on, so he passes the turn. I play a swamp as my land, and I cast my commander, Rafine Scheming Seer. And with that, out on the battlefield, I move to combat, I swing at Busterkins. This will have me connive one on the Archon of Emeria. I put a Ristic Study to the bin and get a plus one plus one counter. Busterkins casts Xenagos, God of Rebels, getting him a card draw, but J-Man counters that with Mana Drain, which will net him five colorless mana on his first main phase. And at this point, Busterkins is very sad. I mean, if I were you, I would just attack him for that. That's just my opinion on the matter. Three coming at you, J-Man. Busterkins gets a tapped treasure, J-Man blocks with his safe old elite, which comes back to the battlefield with a minus one minus one counter on it. On to J-Man's turn, he gets that five additional colorless mana and uses some of it to cast Sage of the Beyond with its foretell cost. This will also reduce some of the foretell costs he may have in the future. On to Kovacs' turn, Busterkins decides to crack his wooded foothills and gets a Zyatora's Proving Ground. Kovacs moves to combat, triggering his Grand Warlord, getting him two additional green mana. I use the channel ability on Iganjo, Seat of the Empire, to kill his Brazen Upstart, which was probably a mistake, seeing as he found a Verdant Force and put that into his hand. He drops Busterkins down to 22, and then in his second main phase, he casts Mejia, Bredegard Protector, pumping his creatures and allowing him to get 1-1 Human Warrior tokens whenever he drops a land onto the battlefield. We don't have that token right now, so. On to my turn, I immediately move into combat at Kovacs. This will connive two on Rafine. I will put to the bin a Grim Hireling and a land. I drop Kovacs to 35, then play an Exotic Orchard as my land for turn. I follow that up by casting Sun Titan. This will allow me to return Ristic Study from the graveyard to the battlefield. You see, that was my plan all along. 
I then pass the turn over to Busterkins. He untaps and plays Orin Frostfang. This triggers his Beast Whisperer, getting him a card draw, as well as me, because I have Aristic Study. Then he moves to combat with Agnes at me, and thanks to Orin Frostfang, Agnes has Death Touch. I don't block, I just take three. Over to J-Man's turn, he plays a Selesnia Signet as an additional source of some mana ramp. And to my chagrin, he pays one for Aristic Study. He then moves to combat at me, dropping me down to 28. Man, this deck does not want to cast one thing at a time. All you gotta do is kill it. I don't know. Or there's always player removal, which Kovacs is leaning into right now. And he'll generate three green mana. Four, five, two, three, two, two. So eight total, right? And if that's, yeah. I wasn't coming. <laughs> yeah, that's for Four, blockers. Yeah, eight. Yeah. <laughs> I declare blocks. Sun Titan will kill Maja. I'll drop down to 22 life. And then he plays his Verdant Force with that extra mana that he generated. I draw a card off of Rhystic Study, and he passes. He makes a Saperling on my upkeep. I draw for turn, and I cast Animate Dead. I target my Grim Hireling that's in the graveyard, hoping to generate some additional treasures, as well as have a source of spot removal. But J-Man has a different plan in mind. He casts Dovin's Veto, slowing me down, but getting me a card draw off of Rhystic Study. I decide to use Channel on Atawara Soaring City and bounce his only flying blocker back to his hand. I move to combat at J-Man. I connive with Rafine for three. I put Mystic Remora, Containment Construct, and Command Tower into the graveyard. And then with Resolving Sun Titan's triggered ability, I get Mystic Remora onto the battlefield. After combat damage, I drop J-Man down to 24, and then I pass the turn over to Busterkins. Kovacs gets another Sapperling on his upkeep, and Busterkins casts Captain Lannery Storm. He does pay the one for my Rhystic Study, which makes me very sad. He moves right into combat at J-Man and myself. He gets a tapped treasure times two, thanks to Agnes. He deals combat damage, and he gets to draw a couple of cards thanks to his Orin Frostfang. Stomping Ground enters the battlefield tapped. He moves to discard, and has to discard Anger, which gives all of his creatures haste. On a J-Man's turn, he draws, peeks the top of his library, plays a Sun Petal Grove, which enters tapped, and Rhystic Study is cast off the top of his library, thanks to removing a counter off of one of his creatures with Falco Spar's ability. I draw some cards off of Rhystic Study and Remora, and on a Kovax's turn, he makes a Sapperling and casts his commander Jetmir, Nexus of Rebels. So they all get plus two, plus zero, have Vigilance, and Trample. Wait, what? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> what does he do? Because He's I have not, six not or more creatures right Perhaps. now, they all get plus two, plus zero, vigilance, and trample. And that's absolutely terrifying. He moves to combat at me. Try to help the table by blocking there. Well, sadly, he knocks me out of the game and gets six floating green mana in the process thanks to his Grand Warlord Rada. He uses some of that to cast Epic Struggle and hoping that he can get 20 or more creatures and win the game on his upkeep. Over to Busterkins, he plays Goldspan Dragon. He gets to draw a card, as well as increase his treasure production. He moves to combat, and a number of triggers happen, giving him additional treasures, and before long, J-Man casts Generous Gift. Trigger. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you pay the one? No. So Busterkins gets a 3-3 Elephant in exchange for his Orin Frostfang, and then J-Man declares his blocks in such a way that his persistent creature comes back and he reduced Busterkin's board state. On second main phase, Busterkin's casts Nadir's Nightblade. This triggers and gets J-Man a card draw. And now whenever Busterkin sacks some of his treasure tokens, he's draining his opponent's life total and gaining some life himself. Busterkin's casts Combustible Gear Hulk in that manner and chooses J-Man as his target opponent, J-Man says go ahead and draw the three cards instead of taking damage. After that, Busterkins casts Kalein, Reclusive Painter. So not only will Kalein produce a treasure token, but can also give plus one plus one counters to future creatures if treasures are used. In this case, with two floating mana remaining from treasure tokens he used, he casts Magna, Brazen Outlaw, and passes the turn. On to J-Man's turn, he plays a Plains as his land, and follows that up with an Ajani, Adversary of Tyrants. This can give him some plus one plus one counters, return a thing from the graveyard, or start generating him some tokens. He casts Simic Signet as a follow-up play. He then activates Ajani, giving one plus one plus one counter to his commander. On his end step, Kovex casts March of the Multitudes, where X equals six. So he gets six soldier tokens, 
with lifelink. On his upkeep, he also gets another sapperling, and he moves right into combat at both of his opponents. Before damage is resolved, Busterkins does one last ditch effort, sacrificing five of his treasure tokens, and he finds a Hellkite Tyrant off of Magna's ability. Unfortunately, this is not enough to save him. Jetmir just had way too many buffs to the team, and Kovacs is victorious. So congratulations, Kovacs! Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let us know what you think in the comments, and as always, thank you very much for watching.